this is 78 Delta. Is there any downhill traffic on the access road? Over. Negative contact, one vehicle proceeding up the access road. Occasionally someone will respond or make a call while I'm on here and then you get on there and say, you know, negative, there's one vehicle proceeding up or down, please be advised. So we're currently located in the high bay, which is a storage area, as well as a means by which we can transport instruments up to the telescope. Above us in the high bay are these giant doors, and we can transport instruments and material through those doors to the telescope. Behind me is one of our two MODs, which is a multi-object double spectrograph. These are imagers and spectrographs that can take data at wavelengths that are, are visible, that our eyes can see. Um, currently, they're, being, they're off the telescope for refurbishment, and they'll be reinstalled on the telescope in early October. The large red object is the bell jar. This object is used to help recoat and make the mirror nice and shiny and reflective. So essentially, the bell jar is moved up through the high bay, through the high bay doors. It's put on one of the two mirrors. A uh, seal is created, and then what happens is uh, pressure is applied, it's evacuated, and we actually are able to recoat the mirror to make it nice and shiny and clean and able to collect lots of photons. A lot of containers in the high bay here are the remnants of uh, Link Nirvana, which is our newest instrument. This was built in Heidelberg, Germany, and shipped all the way from Germany to Mount Graham. Uh, Link Nirvana is an infrared imager that uses multi conjugate adaptive optics to help clear the sky up, basically make the sky less turbulent. So very simply, it works by lots of little detectors, look at little stars, they measure how the stars are moving around, and they make a lot of mirrors compensate for that so you get a nice super sharp object and super sharp resolution even better than you get from the Hubble Space Telescope. Okay, so we call this the bogey level. Um, this is the, the level where the wheels that support the rotating structure uh, resides. They, they sit on this track uh, there's four stations, two six-wheel, this is a six-wheel station, um, and two four-wheel stations. And these four stations support roughly 2,000 tons of the building, the weight of the building. The building rotates on this outer pier, the telescope rotates on this inner pier. So we are on the floor of the Large Binocular Telescope, the world's largest optical and near-infrared telescope. Uh, the telescope is configured almost the same on both sides. We have the primary mirrors, we have the large binocular cameras, which are we call it prime focus. So the photons from the sky hit the primary and they bounce up and they go directly into the large binocular cameras. So for instance, if we were to start tonight's observing with the LBCs, then the secondary arm you see, which is what we call in the beam, would be moved out of the way and we move the large binocular camera into the beam. When we use Lucy or MODS, which are optical and imager spectrographs, one is optical, which is MODS, and one is in the near infrared, which is Lucy, then we move the large binocular cameras out of the way and we move the swing arms for the secondaries into position. Um, there's also a tertiary mirror. And if we use Lucy, which sits in a position between the two primary mirrors, the tertiary mirror will swing into position so the photons can be directed into Lucy. Uh, the two secondary mirrors which are being used currently are what we call adaptive optic secondaries. They have one meter or so in diameter and they have controls in them which actually very rapidly change their configuration. So when we're in adaptive optics mode, and we use this with Lucifer, this very quick motion of the mirrors is used to compensate for the turbulence in the atmosphere. So if you ever looked out on a night with you can see lots of stars and you see the stars dancing, this is the atmospheric turbulence. And so the less the stars dance around, the much better it is for astronomical observations. Um, 
and the only way to really beat atmospheric turbulence is to compensate for it or to go into deep space. Uh, one thing we need to do on a daily basis is to refill the doers to keep the instruments cold. So the large binocular cameras, for instance, need to be filled daily, as do the MODS imager and spectrographs. Before we start science observations, we tilt the telescope to horizon, so it's easier to reach the LBCs. Uh, the little cart has a scissor lift. We go up, refill the doer, and then bring it back down. To refill MODS, we keep the telescope at zenith, so that the mods which hang off the back end of the primary mirrors can be filled directly. Uh, also attached on the telescope are several different uh, items to help observing, one of which is uh, the DIM monitor, which is basically a differential image motion monitor. It's essentially, you think of it as a small telescope with two apertures, and what it does is it measures, it fixes on a star, and compares the motion of the star in the two uh, in, the two, in the two apertures. And from that, we're able to tell just how steady the atmosphere is, just how much turbulence there is. And depending on how steady it is, we use that as a guidepost to determine what kind of programs one should be observing for the night, and if perhaps you know, adaptive optics would be useful for observing for that night. We also have a laser guide star system, which we call Argos. This is what we call a ground laser adaptive optic system. It's six lasers, green lasers, which create artificial stars in the sky. And those lasers are actually attached to the upper structure of the telescope. And so in situations where we want to use adaptive optics in the lasers, we actually would fire those lasers into the sky and then be able to track the motions of these fake or uh, artificial stars. So one of the other things that we have to keep in mind uh, as things come on and off the telescope, as we get new instrumentation, is that we have to keep the, te the telescope balanced. That is, the weight has to be distributed properly, otherwise the telescope won't be able to track or move smoothly. So what we have is a dynamic uh, balance system. Essentially, we have several glycol, large glycol tanks situated throughout the telescope, and then we can redistribute weight in those tanks depending upon what instruments are on or off the telescope. Um, and this can be done um, fairly quickly and it's usually done if any major changes are done, for instance, if we have to service an instrument or if we're installing an instrument. Uh, we use glycol because if we use something like water at cold temperatures it would freeze. Glycol remains fluid at very cold temperatures. So, so our, one of our biggest advantages is we can reconfigure the telescope uh, within 20 minutes or less, depending on what configuration, simply by going to a GUI and clicking a few buttons. Uh, it really gives us an advantage in the astronomy world over other telescopes, where it may take an hour, a day, or uh, the same amount of time, but uh, much more manpower. Well, we are in the LBT control room, so this is sort of the heart of the operation during the night. So behind me, we have David Gonzalez Huerta, who is our telescope operator for tonight. So he's in charge of making sure all the complicated systems work correctly, the telescope can move. Um, along the row of computers here are what are called our ob stations. Normally, when we have visiting astronomers observe at the LBT in person, they'll be using these workstations to run the instruments. So these will be the ones that will control the data and where we're pointing and take uh, the information from either the LBCs, MODs, or LUCIs. Uh, tonight, we have our uh, service observers down in Tucson observing from our remote observing room on the fifth floor of Stewart Observatory. So if you look at the screen behind me, you can see several of our service observers there. Over here is we have the big board, which gives all the information as to what instrument is authorized. And by that, I mean which instrument uh, is basically running the telescope and captures all the photons. So that's uh, in the optical path, uh, where we're pointed, seeing conditions, weather, etc. So this is where you would spend pretty much all of your night on a good night of observing. <laughs>